This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome back to the watch guys. I hope you are safe and well. This week's watch is from a company formed in 1755, making it the oldest Swiss manufacturer. It is one of the most highly regarded names in horology, and its motto is do better if possible, and it's always possible. This is the first watch that I've bought from this brand. Yes, that's right. This week's watch, ladies and gentlemen, is the Vacheron Constantin Overseas Self Winding, and it is stunning. And here it is. This is the simply magnificent Vacheron Constantin Overseas Self Winding. My first ever watch from this brand. and I'm incredibly excited to show it to you this week. It's a 41 millimeter steel travel watch that's beautiful, practical, and comes with the full weight of the reputation of one of the best names in the business. The overseas travel range was reinvented in 2016 and it has become extremely popular. With five new models, 12 references, three new caliber movements, and an ingenious interchangeable bracelet strap system. And waiting lists are climbing. But if you can get a relationship with a Vacheron boutique quickly, as I did, you may still be in with a chance. But before we get any further in this episode, let's do a quick wristwatch check. And under the blue jumper this week, I have the Constantine Chaikin Night Joker. This watch was first announced in 2017, but I only got round to buying it in 2020. They only made 50 of them. This is an individually numbered number 17 out of 50. It's a 42 millimeter watch with a black PVD case, and it's a lot more subtle than many of Constantine Chaikin's Joker watches because it's all black with purple accents. It's also got that all important luminescence so that you can read it at night and it looks super cool. But this week it's all about the overseas self winding and it's quite stunning unadorned dial. There's just a simple small date window and of course the signature Maltese cross at the 12 o'clock position. And that means you can indulge and enjoy the incredible depth of this translucent blue dial. The dial was what really set me on a path to acquiring this watch. At first I thought the photos must have been doctored, some kind of Kardashian-esque Instagram filter. But I soon realised that it really does look that blue in real life. It's unlike anything else, it's so vivid and so liquid looking. The 41mm case is made of steel, it's 11mm thick, and it's also anti-magnetic. The overseas self-winding has a six-sided bezel with indents so large it looks like you can actually twist them and take the crystal out. The Calibre 5100 movement in this overseas model was developed and manufactured in-house and boasts 172 parts, a 60-hour power reserve to keep it running when not on the wrist, and an oscillating weight in 22 karat gold. And the exposed case back means you can look at that movement in all its glory. But one of the most surprising and delightful features of this watch is the interchangeable bracelet strap system. It's so easy, it's really simple to swap them out and you actually get three of them with the watch when you buy it. Something that other watches should take note of. So you've got this one, a steel bracelet, You've got this one, a blue alligator, and you've got this one, a blue rubber. The blue alligator strap, incidentally, is supposedly called Mississippiensis. No idea why. I never change the straps on my watches. I simply cannot be bothered. But with this one, I've worn them all, and I swap them frequently. As a consequence, I've worn my overseas self-winding with all three straps, and at the moment, I'm favouring the blue alligator. But of course, you want to see this strap system in action, so let's go through and show you exactly how it works. The main thing you have to notice is that when you turn the watch upside down, right where the strap meets the case, you've got a little tiny lever. And what you do is you get your thumbnail and you push it into that lever and you pull it towards you. And hey presto, off it comes really easily. Just repeat the same on this side. And there you go, immediately the strap is off. It was that simple. And then to reattach it, you just do the opposite. There you go, straight in. And this side, boom, how about that? You see, 
It's so easy. There are 34 watches in the current Vacheron Constantin overseas range in various metals, cases, sizes and complications. As you can see here, it includes the big boy tourbillons in pink, gold and steel, the ultra thin skeletons, the overseas world times, chronographs, perpetual calendar, and of course the self windings. But since this is my first Vacheron Constantin, I am keen to learn more. So let's look at the history of the company. Now, the first thing to say is that Vacheron Constantin is over 265 years old. So the history is vast. So I'm not gonna to go too deep because otherwise this would be a three hour episode. Instead, I'm gonna focus on some of the key people and the key watches and innovations that they've had over the years. And that should give you a decent feel for this groundbreaking watchmaker. The company was formed in 1755 by a 24 year old watchmaker, Jean-Marc Vachon. He then created his first pocket watch, this one, which had gold hands. In 1785, Vacheron's son, Abraham, took over and had to deal with, amongst other things, the French Revolution. I wouldn't want to have been making luxury items in that time. Keen to keep the company as a family business, Abraham's son, Jacques Barthélemy Vacheron, was trained in the watchmaker's art, and he ran the company from 1810. Vacheron had, by the turn of the century, become adept and known for producing quality timepieces of exquisite quality, such as this musical quarter repeater with an enamel dial and guilloche decorated case back. Then in 1819, Jacques Vacheron and a businessman, François Constantin, entered into a partnership and Vacheron et Constantin was born. It was at this time that Constantin penned the now famous motto for the company, translated as do better if possible, and that's always possible, on the 5th of July, 1819. In 1839, one of the company's most significant employees joined as technical director. His name was Georges Auguste Lechaux, and he was responsible for a number of watchmaking inventions, and he even invented the concept of calibers to categorize movements. But it was the pantograph that really helped make Vacheron et Constantin one of the world's premier watchmakers. The pantograph allowed the mass production of quality watch components, and this meant parts could be interchanged, which gave greater production flexibility and reliability. 1880 saw the company use the Maltese cross on its watches for the first time, a symbol of the company's quest for perfection. At the turn of the century, demand for Vachon et Constantin's watches, such as this royal chronometer, meant it needed somewhere else to display them to its high-end clients. So in 1906, the first official boutique was opened in the island building in Geneva. Here it is. In the Roaring Twenties, Vacheron expanded its operations to the USA, where its luxury wristwatches, like this one, proved popular with the newly wealthy socialites. And how about this for a special piece? This is the royal masterpiece made for King Fawad I of Egypt's son, Farouk. It took five years to make, it's in solid gold, and it's got 14 complications. And who can forget the iconic and highly collectible 222, a steel wristwatch made to celebrate the company's 222nd anniversary in 1977. It was designed by Jörg Heisek and is the chief inspiration for the modern day overseas range. In 1996, the overseas collection was born and this was upgraded and relaunched 20 years later in 2016 to the watch we see here today. But just before we end the history, have a look at this, the most complicated pocket watch ever created, it took eight years to create, and it was commissioned by a serious collector. The reference 57260, 206th anniversary, with 57 complications. 57! And now it is time, of course, to go into Unboxovision. Let's check out the packaging of this overseas self-winding. So it comes in a large square black box with gold Vacheron Constantin writing on it and you slip that open and inside and under a dust cover you have a square box uh, if we put that aside for the for a second and look underneath you've got a pouch in the base and inside there we've got an invitation to be part of the Vacheron Constantin Collectors Club the Hour Club and also the instructions for the watch we also have there the wallet then that's got the registration card on it and also has the certificate of authenticity. And then we go to the watch box itself. It's a black effect with the Maltese cross inlaid in the wood. And then you've also got the gold Vacheron Constantin logo on it. 
and we open that up and there it is sat on its cushion what a fabulous watch that is but of course the drama doesn't end there because if we ease out the watch and then lift up the sort of foam case that it's on we've got the steel bracelet that came with the watch and also the rubber strap as well and also there you can see there's the seal so overall i'd say it's quite an event to open up the packaging of this and you do get quite a lot with it top marks vacheron so why is this interesting and why is this my first ever vacheron constantin well it's the simplicity and the vividness of that dial you really cannot believe it is that blue until you see it in bright light obviously as a boy i'm a sucker for blue things but this particular electric blue really does stand out and in the bright light it is spectacular i mean let's just drink in the details of this thing for a minute i mean look at it very simple slim hour markers and indices the combination of a very simple dial there's only the date window to really complicate it you've got that maltese cross and then the light just cascades over that dial and it lights up it's a phenomenal piece it's got a good positive feel when you wind the watch and of course you can also spend a bit of time gazing at the movement through the exposed case back it's a great all-rounder this is yes nineteen thousand one hundred pounds is a lot of money but for something like this it actually feels pretty good value i really like the fact that i now have a vacheron constantin which of course was a glaring omission in the watch guys collection it is after all one of the most serious and highly respected watches in all of horology but more than that it's the usability of the thing that i really like i thought maybe it would get some rotation on the wrist but i would always go back to some of my more tried and tested models but no the flexibility of having those three different straps means that it gives you three different moods and styles and situations it really is like having three watches in one the bracelet for serious days blue rubber for a relaxed sports look and Alligator instantly makes it a dress watch. What made me buy this, my first Vacheron Constantin? Well, this was a brand that I'd heard of, respected, but never came close to buying, apart from maybe a brief foray looking at 222s. I actually first saw this watch at the start of 2021 on Houdinki. I think they must have been doing some roundup or retrospective view because it was an original article, I think, that linked back to 2016 when the watch was launched. I was immediately captivated by the blue dial and just how incredible it looked. I couldn't believe that it would look like that in real life, but it did start the urge to want one. And I actually posted on the watchguys.tv Instagram page that I was really excited by it. Lo and behold, I got a message from Tom Exton, who goes as TGE on social media. And he said, well, if you want one of these watches, you need to get in touch with Edward at the London Vacheron Constantin Boutique. So of course, I got in touch and I registered my interest. I said I was really looking forward to getting one of these things. Is there a way that I could? And at that time, and we're talking early 2021, you could still put your name down. There was still a list for this watch. Now that has now changed. They've completely changed the allocation process for this watch and you can't put yourself down on a list. There must be some other way. But they'd also just changed this to a boutique exclusive. So that made it even harder to get. But fortunately, at exactly the right time, I snuck in there and managed to get my name down for one. And incredibly, just four months later, it arrived. And I actually traveled to London specifically to meet up with Ed and get an introduction to the Vacheron Constantin boutique, which I'd never been into before. And I was able to go down into the room in the basement and have a handover of the watch itself. So it was an incredibly privileged experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, and it all went to make my first Vacheron experience extremely pleasurable. I've since been told incidentally that it's now well over a year waiting time to get this watch. This overseas self-winding costs £19,100 brand new and it is quite a lot of money but you have to remember that you are getting a high level of craftsmanship and it is from one of the biggest names in the business. 
And also, thanks to the miracle of supply and demand, this watch is currently going for about £30,000 on the secondary market. So it has appreciated by 50%. Am I pleased with this overseas self-winding? Definitely yes. It's really changed my view on the company. It's really opened my mind to perhaps having more Vacheron Constantin watches in the future. But it is such a usable, good looking, wearable thing. Flexible, beautiful, easy to wear, nice and comfortable. It's a great all rounder. It's kind of like the Patek Philippe Aquanaut. It's just something that you can throw on and wear and it just suits many different occasions, including daily wear. And I am so glad that I've added this to the collection. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode on my brand new Vacheron Constantin Overseas Self Winding. I'm incredibly excited to own it. I love it. I'm wearing it a lot. And I hope that you found this episode interesting and that it gave you a bit more information about this incredible watch. If you like what I'm doing on the watchguys.tv, please subscribe, leave comments and likes, and there'll be another episode along next week.